Okay, so if you want to make something like this, where you have an object connected to a, a skeletal mesh, uh, you, you can use a physics constraint actor, like this one, to connect the two. So we'll just delete this one and let's see how we can do this. So let's just get this. I'm going to explain why uh, we have to be careful. So first you drag in the physics constraint actor like this. And just place it here for the moment. And then you have, you can use this eyedropper to select the two objects. So first we'll take this one, the cube, and then take the other one so now as you can see by these two lines they're connected and we can already uh, test it like this just make sure you disable the collision between the two so you don't have um, a weird movement okay so let's test it like this so if we test it like this we see that it's something off now the problem is if you look here you actually have to put in the constraint bone because what it does like this is actually connect to I think the first bone as you can see here so we want it to connect to this one well to a particular bone so if you need to know the bone name you actually need to know the 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 end bone name here so you go into your uh, skeletal mesh and if you look here come back again so the the origin of the uh, skeletal mesh is here so we need the the last one okay so if we go here we need this one because this is the origin I need this one here but we'll go into physics for that and as you see here we have it this one so if you look here have bone underscore zero zero one so we'll put that one in Unfortunately, this one we can't use the eyedropper for it, or I think we can. I don't know exactly. Um, maybe. Not sure how we can. If you show the bones, I can't remember right now which are the bones. Developer bones. Yeah, this one. Let, let's try. Let's try the eyedropper again. So it was the second one, and if we put this bone, does it work? No, it doesn't. So just so for the because it's the second actor, we put the second constraint bone here. So bone underscore zero zero one, and you can see now it changed from this one to this one right here. Now it's this one and the the object that are connected if you try again you can see it already works okay now I'll just explain a bit uh, how the physics constraint works so the first object that you put here from the center of that object because this object is the cube right now the first object that we put in this list not the second is from the center of that object to the location of the physics constraints there's actually like a metal bar that connects the two so however this one rotates this point will not change and the movement of this bone right here will actually be so the the rules that you put here for the physics constraint will actually act between the center of this object and this one right here so it's not the center of the first object it's this one right here and uh, the, the location of the physics constraint and the physics constraint and the object are like welded together with a metal bar so however you rotate the reference uh, the rotation reference is the rotation of the uh, this object but with the pivot right here so if you want to get something uh, realistic for this let's say this um, rope is connected right here so what you will have to do is uh, move that it's kind of 
annoying that it's right there so you move that here so now it penetrates a bit it's okay because we've disabled the collision between the two here okay so just remember this when you disable collision you disable only between those components so uh, it's only between this one and this one the rest of the bones will actually collide collide with uh, the the cube so now it's good but this is not okay we should also move this one and uh, we actually let's put the snap to one so you you should put this at the right at the edge right here because we want the grip point of this part of the rope to be exactly at the surface so it's like it's connected to the surface so if you try it again now you'll see that it looks a lot more realistic okay and if you want to have like a rope that it's kind of stiff right here this segment is stiff and the, the other ones are flexible uh, let's change this so you go here to the rotation and you also want to lock this so now if we try again you see as you can see right now it's a lot more realistic and what you would probably want to have this do okay now uh, also what you have to remember is that uh, the, the positions of all the objects all the components that are linked to the physics constraint and the physics constraint itself the the position that they have when you play the game that's what it's considered as the reference okay so unfortunately you cannot i don't know how you can but like uh, have this uh, wi uh wiggled or something like this and uh, so I mean you have to have it straight like that I think I don't know how else you could have it uh, I don't know how to do that uh, now uh, but yeah very important is when you when you modify something with this let's say you wanna okay you wanna move it you wanna put it over there don't just take these two and 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 move them you will have to take the physics constraint together with the objects and as a group so always keep the relative positions between each other otherwise this will get off uh, center it will get weird you get weird results okay so you move them together like this okay always anything you do just rotate or something just make them together okay if you want to minimize the uh, I don't know the the error that you could have maybe you could parent the physics constraint just drag the physics constraint and, and, and parent it to the cube but you still have the rope you can't I don't think you can I don't think uh, it would get a good movement if you parent also the rope to this I'm not sure but yeah just move them together because uh, let's say you move this one like this and look what happens okay so it's that metal bar that I was talking about so even if you free this let's say you free this the translation uh, this here okay let's limit this to 50 centimeters oh, sorry 50 okay so it has this range where you can move freely but it will still move around this point and not around this point so let's see that so as you can see if I drag it it still moves around th that point that is uh, is actually stationary in relation to this uh, the first object so the first object is very important because it's in relation to its location that this is calculated so if you go into the physics constraints here and you change the, the objects around it's actually this metal bar it's gonna be between the bone and the location as a the, of the physics constraint 
and the rules that you have here will actually apply between this point right here and this object so yeah that's basically it and if you want other rules for this uh, check out my other videos and you can do elasticity and rotate around in a certain plane or stuff like that you'll find them uh, explained in other videos and they, ch they fun function the same way I mean uh, just because you have a skeletal mesh here is just you know it's just that uh, you connect to a bone but the other way the, the other stuff is just like normal components yeah so that's it